Yo, what's going on, guys? Christy Flakes here. So we had ourselves an NBA trade last night. And these are honestly my favorite Woj bombs. Like, straight up, man, you are, like, literally arms deep in a box of cheeses or something like that. It's damn 1037 at night. And then all of a sudden, the Woj bombs drops. Like, what's going on, man? What's going on? Um, Actually, this one was at 1121 p.m. And my bitch ass was asleep, man. But I'm awake now. And uh, we're going to talk about it. So as you guys can see... The Los Angeles Lakers are in advanced talks, and they already actually confirmed the deal, um, to acquire Utah Jazz guard Patrick Beverly. Patrick damn Beverly, bro. I'm the Los Angeles Lakers playing with Russell Westbrook, man, for uh, THT. Stanley Johnson. Stanley Johnson, man. Not quite THT in the first. See, THT in the first is enough to get you a time machine and, you know, get you a prime Michael Jordan. THT and Stanley Johnson, well, that works against your odds. You end up getting Patrick Beverly, man. Uh, if I'm being 100% honest, though, um, this trade, I like it for both sides. I think it makes a lot of sense for both sides. Uh, Patrick Beverly is like a career 37% three-point shooter, which makes him the best shooter on the Los Angeles Lakers as of right now, which I don't know how you all feel about that. But I don't know, man. Like Patrick Beverly, he's gonna bring that craziness. He's gonna bring that, he's gonna bring that glue guy mentality. And uh I mean, I know he's got obviously, you know, a big personality and everything like that. But yeah, I was reading reports that the that the beef with Russell Westbrook's already squashed. Like so much of that stuff happens because two players can be competitive and you're on a basketball court and everything like that. Um at the end of the day, you know, like when you're on the same team. I mean, you go to, you know, you go to battle with each other every single night. You know what I'm saying? So it just kind of fixes things like that, in my own humble opinion. But we're going to go ahead and we are going to hop over to some NBA 2K22 just because I do want... By the way, y'all like my, uh, my, my bad boy shirt, bro. The damn uh, Bill and Beer here look like the damn <laughs> Incredible Hulk with all that green. It's a green screen, but I don't know, man. Doesn't look green to me, but regardless. Okay, I do want to put this trade in NBA 2K22, though, just because, you know, I want to look at both the rosters. I want to do a simulation. I want to see, you know, how exactly this is going to work out for both sides. They kind of talk about it individually because, you know, Patrick Beverly is the big focus of the trade. But, damn, also the Jazz got some things out of it, too, which I think just signals perhaps a full-on rebuild. It just kind of goes in that direction. But let's go ahead and pop this trade in real quick here, guys. Um, so, yes, Patrick Beverly, I don't think anything else was included. 2K might force me to add another player to, like, match it or whatever. But, yes, it's going to be for Stanley Johnson, man. 74 overall. You know what? For what it's worth, um, Stanley Johnson was actually a pretty solid role player for the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, I know I handle the man and stuff like that because, obviously, his connection to Detroit Pistons and being a big bust and everything like that. Um, but, I don't know. Like, Stanley Johnson, the, 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 as the years go on, he kind of has played himself more into a specific type of role of just being like, you know, he's going to be like a defensive dude and stuff like that. And that's fine and everything. And then obviously the other big guy here, THT, man, THT. So let's do this trade. And uh, do both teams accept? Yes, we do. There we go, man. So let's look at it from the Lakers standpoint. All of a sudden, what exactly is their team looking like? Um, and it has, you know, Beverly listed at the shooting guard spot. Uh, by the way, I don't think Dwight, but I don't think, is Dwight back on the Lakers? Okay, there we go, guys. I actually found a roster with, like, every single updated player, not just some of them. So, um, yes, it's trying to make Patrick Beverly the starting point guard. That might honestly be, like, man, I think Russell will be the starter. I just think he's going to be. But I don't, I honestly don't hate the idea of Patrick Beverly starting in a lineup with LeBron and AD and then Russell Westbrook being the guy that could take over the bench unit as a six-man. Like, I think it's a great role. I know it's not going to happen. I very much think we have a Camilo Anthony situation where Russell's not there yet to admit that that's probably the best role for him on the team and everything. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to go with Russell Westbrook, obviously, as the point guard. Um, I heard that Austin Reeves is going to start, so he's listed as a shooting guard, so we will go ahead and put him right there. Um... Juan Toscano Anderson, I actually kind of like him as the starting small forward, you know, 3 and D type of player and everything like that, so, interesting, interesting, I think we'll keep him there, and then you got Patrick Beverly, you got none, Damon Jones, uh, they will take away the minutes from Jones here, we'll um, get some more Thomas Bryant, who I actually like as an offensive center, I don't really like him defensively, but offensively he's pretty nice, Lonnie Walker should get some uh, good run out there too, and uh, yeah, let's get Reeves playing at about 24 a game, uh, let's get you at about 26. Russell Westbrook playing 32. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then Patrick Beverly can play the point guard or shooting guard position off the bench. 
and really probably would be in the closing lineup too i think you put him at that two spot because he can be a catch two three point shooter so i like my patrick beverly three and d type of point guard not really going to demand the basketball but honestly a pretty underrated playmaker too like i've seen him have some pretty good you know assist games and things like that so yeah we gotta get that going for us uh and then over for the utah jazz side of things i mean what do you do with the utah jazz i I think this means they're probably most definitely trading the way Donovan Mitchell. I think that's what this means. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put THT in the star lineup just because I think that's more fun for the simulation. But honestly speaking too, like this dude got a pretty good payday. Uh, what was it? Last off season or something like that. Like the dude's got some decent money. You know, I, I thought it was higher than that. Is it only for two seasons? Thought he had a little extra money coming his way, man. But regardless, I thought THC sounded like a $50 million deal or something like that. But uh, yeah, 21 years of age, crazy ass wingspan. Um, I think he still has really good potential in the NBA. I do think being on the Lakers definitely made him a bit on the overrated side just from a trade value standpoint. Um, it just seemed like anytime there was an all-star or near all-star caliber player, it was always THT in the first. And that's just, that's not who he is. Like let THT be THT. He's a good young prospect that could end up being a really good player in the NBA, or maybe he won't be. And that's kind of where I'm at with THT. But uh, the Jazz gives him a good opportunity to really showcase his talents. So I'm happy about that, man. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and simulate this NBA season. I want to see what this Patrick Beverly Lakers team is all about. See if it's that big of a difference maker. I feel like it is. I feel like it is. Like, just something about this move, it was a smart choice. Because the Lakers, I don't know if they have the greatest offseason. And little moves like this can make big changes down the road, man. Let's simulate and see what happens. Okay, guys, we are at the end of the regular season. Uh, sadly, it didn't really make a huge difference for the Los Angeles Lakers as they are 12th in the conference, man. Um, I don't know. I think a big part of it's going to come down to health. But, you know, it's like LeBron's getting older. Although last year he was playing like an MVP, one of his best seasons. Anthony Davis injury prone, you know, Russell Westbrook. It's like, it's so hard to look at those three names listed on a basketball team and be like, damn, 12th place. But literally we saw last year. So I don't know. Uh, we got one more game here against the Denver Nuggets. I don't think this team is making the playoffs, even with a W. Nope. Uh, Jokic MVP. Cade. Hey, rookie of the year, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Um, yeah, I'm also going to guess the Jazz probably did not make the playoffs either, but we'll see about that. Oh, sh oh, 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 yo. Utah Jazz, man. Hey, THT, baby. <laughs> I did not expect to go into this video and have it be the Jazz being the team that made the playoffs and not the Lakers. I'm actually kind of shocked by that. Um, well, I guess they're in the play-in tournament, but still, at least they're there, right? At least they're there. Um, damn, bro, this shirt be throwing off my camera. I apologize, man. I'm all over the damn board here. So um, let's go to the player stats on the season. I mean, I guess, you know, they still have Donovan Mitchell. If he was to not be on the team, then yeah, they probably would be making the playoffs. But I mean, regardless, like, like I don't know, THT's still a good player. So 10 points, uh, four rebounds, five assists. Love the passing from THT. All right, man. Love to see a one steal per game. Um, let's see how Stanley Johnson did. All right, putting up about his career average with the Detroit Pistons. Very nice, Stanley. Very nice numbers for you. Love to see it. Um, and then for the Los Angeles Lakers, so Patrick Beverly... Um, at about eight points, five rebounds, four assists. If he's in one steal, one block, yeah, if he's doing that, that's a big-time W. That's a big-time W for him up in there, man. Uh, Russell Westbrook, 16.6 rebounds, six assists. Yeah, I feel like those guys can play together. I think that's going to be completely fine. I think we're going to see a lot of Russell Westbrook and Patrick Beverly in the backcourt together. And if this team can lock in defensively, they're a scary ass team, man. Like if they can lock into the defense and the intensity that Westbrook can bring, but needs to bring a more controlled way. And same with Patrick Beverly, um, this team could be a little scary defensively, man. I really do believe that. So let's go ahead and see what the Utah Jazz do here. Simulate playing. Come on, man. Come on. Well, uh, at the end of the day, I feel like both teams are better off. The Utah Jazz did not need Patrick Beverly. They get a little bit of a chance, a little bit of a risk with THT. See what happens. Hey, Toronto. Shout out, man. And the Lakers. Eh, they kind of needed a guy like Patrick Beverly, man. It's a W all the rounds. So oh, Fred Van Vliet, finals MVP. Love to see it. Uh, what do you all think about that? Let me know in the comment section below. That is all we have, man. Thank you all so much for watching. And peace out, my friends.